Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're gonna finally get to my discussion for Lasher number one. I'm sorry I'm a little late on this. I just got behind on everything this past week trying to crush on Neverland and work on that, and then also uh, work um, on the few, the few days I went to work, and then also Megacon uh, was just a lot to do in the span of like six days. So I got very, very behind on everything, and at times when I came home, I was like, I just need to rest. If I'm going to make it through the next day uh, with all the stuff I got going on, if I'm going to keep my energy up at a convention like Megacon, um, I got to, you know, I got to rest. So I pretty much just did the adult thing. <laughs> it just was like, all right, I'm going to rest and I'll talk comics later on, which, you know, hey, comics are adult things too. But I had to, you know, prioritize and, and I chose rest and it was a smart move. So now I'm here today on my day off recording all these videos for y'all. So we have last year, number one, um, and this issue actually really hit home to me. I did have, um, I have the variant cover, the one that connects to all the other ones. Um, they ordered it for me at Coliseum of Comics, so I don't know when it's going to come in, but hopefully it'll come in soon. And whenever it does, I'll give out a second digital code of that in a future video. But for now, I do have a digital code that came with this one, and I'll put that on screen right there. First person to put that code in gets a copy of this, because we're going to get into spoilers. You know, we this isn't really a review. This is more of a discussion. I just tell you my thoughts on it, and we kind of go through the book a little bit. Um, but I always encourage you, you know, don't let me give away the comic to you to an extent, even though we're going to talk about it in that format. I always want you all to go pick up these comics yourselves and come up with your own opinions and share those opinions with me down below because sometimes we're just not going to agree and I'd rather you, you know, ingest it yourself um, because this one, this had a lot going on and there was a lot of little visual things that kind of helped fill in some of the story that I missed out on the first time. So I read it a second and even a third time to go through it um, because this also touched on something a little personal that I'm going through currently and it was... Um, I don't know. It's it was I wasn't expecting it. I guess uh, so. It you know it's not one of those things where like I'm like oh I connect with this even more or anything like that. It's just but it did make me kind of I don't know. It's like a worse fear kind of thing. So uh, so we'll we'll get into that. So the book um, this issue is written by Clay McLeod Chapman um, and then also Chris Mooneyham and uh, Danio S. Beirut are, are the artists of it. Um, and Clay McLeod Chaplin drew or wrote, I'm sorry, the, the screen book that we talked about and that we wanted to come back. It came back for one issue, which was nice during King and Black. And uh, Clay got to wrap up some of the stuff there uh, and with some of his story that he was doing. And then now gets to write Andy again in her next evolution in this book. So I think that's kind of fitting because I think Clay has done a great job with Andy. And so it's nice that Clay was given the chance to write this issue, which takes Andy into a new form. So we'll get into that because obviously the last issue ended with Andy being stabbed through the chest. And that's where this issue picks up. Phage is stabbing Andy. And notice Phage is orange, but red on top. And that's because Carnage is like co-piloting Phage right now. And because Phage let him. Uh, Phage was like, you know, they have a choice, you know, and, and Carnage was like, hey, can I co-pilot you? And Phage is like, you know what? Yeah, I'm sick of all this crap, and I, I side with you, Carnage. So there's some symbiotes that are Life Foundation that don't want to side with Carnage, like Scream didn't, um, and that didn't go too well for her, and Phage, who is uh, siding with Carnage. So it'll be interesting to see how some of the other ones, as we get to them, you know, because we have Agony left, and then we also have Riot, uh, the villain from the first Venom movie. So I'll be really curious to see what sides they pick. Um, but Lasherness doesn't want to choose Carnage's side, but ends up being duped into it through their host. And we're going to get into that here. So um, so obviously Andy got stabbed and, you know, Flash is like, no, you know, I got I to gotta save her. So she's wounded. She's bleeding out. Phage is fighting the guardsmen guys um, and getting into it with them. I think he even rips one of their heads off in this panel right here, uh, which is pretty awesome. And while he's in that battle... Flash takes Andy and brings her to Dr. Steve and is like, we got to figure something out. And like I said, I'm going to get into spoilers. So if you haven't read the book yet too, go read it. It's it's good. And then come back here later. Um, but I, I'm liking this Extreme Carnage event because it's following up with a lot of things that, uh, that Mike Costa did on his run. All the things I've always wanted to see again. I'm like, Where's Alchemex? Where's Dr. Steve? Where's the, how does Alchemex, are they still working on anti-venom symbiotes? Like what, what's going on over there? And this series is kind of touching on that. And I love it for that reason, because I liked Mike Costa's run, especially at the end. And he built a, a good supporting cast for Eddie and I didn't want those characters to go away. So I'm really happy these writers are writing these characters again. So while that's all happening with Flash and Andy and Dr. Steve and the Guardsmen and Phage and that battle, we have kind of the, the core of this book, which is Lasher who finds his way to a patient who is dying, whose basically body has died, but the, his brain hasn't moved on yet. Um, he has suffered dementia. And as you guys know, I've been 
I have been diagnosed with early onset dementia. So my memory and uh, has been all over the place lately and it's been pretty bad. There's been stuff I've had to watch or rewatch, uh, you know, to understand or to comprehend or to take better notes on. Uh, that's why my Trisse finale video is not up yet still, uh, because I was rewatching it and I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm kind of not, I don't even know what I'm talking about here. Um, so I have to redo that video. And so because of things like that, it adds an, a little bit of an extra challenge, although I'm still in the early stages. So I can only imagine how frustrating and things will get in the future. So when I was reading this, I was like, oh, well, I, I hope this is not the future. Um, you know, this gentleman here, William, is brain dead, basically laying in a bed. His wife comes in or someone comes in to, like, give him food and maybe it's a nurse um, to feed him and stuff. And while he's there, Lasher bonds with him and then Carnage immediately takes over. And Lasher is fighting it. Uh, so one of these things you see is like these little sound effects down here. Blah, 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 you know, um, I think some of that is, uh, I don't know, it could be the machine in his room. I, well, he doesn't have a machine in the room, but it could just be like the noise that I guess Carnage is making. Because when he's talking as Crane, it's just words. But I think there's some other sound that's influencing these symbiotes that Carnage is able to to do because of his connection to the Void at one point, I'm assuming. Um, so uh, so anyway, William ends up, uh, Lasher gets activated and wakes up and is no longer in control. So Lasher's trying to get William to snap out of it. He's like, don't, don't listen to Carnage. He's making us do this. And so, you know, Lasher's walking around the hospital and then, you know, throughout the city, uh, killing people because William is stuck in his void of his memories where his mind, you know, there's nothing up there. Um, it's just infinite black, which is, uh, yeah. So I don't want to, I mean, yeah, it's, it, this hit a little home in some areas, um, for me. Um, so Carnage is there saying, I can give you your memories back. Just come to Washington, D.C. And, and rejoin, you know, bring my kin to me, bring Lasher to me. And Lasher's like, no, don't take me to him. But William gives in and allows, since Lasher won't let, uh, you know, Carnage in, William has decided to let Carnage in. And so because of that, he's able to pilot Lasher, although he's not taken over him like he did Phage, uh, but he's able to pilot him and bring him to D.C. And on the way, you can see, like, Carnage is pretending to be William's wife, Susie, and he's getting Phage to like, or Lasher, I'm sorry, to kill people as he's leaving the hospital and work his way to DC. So um, so that's what's going on there. And meanwhile, like I said, Andy is trying to be saved by uh, Flash, who brings her to Dr. Steve. Uh, so he brings her there and says, can you do anything? Where's her symbiote? And he goes, look, her symbiote, with the little sliver I had, it kind of died. So, or it was dying. So I had to save it. And so what I did was I bonded it with a piece of your symbiote because we kind of have, we've made, you know, anti-venom stuff here before. So it's a synthetic symbiote. So I bonded it with hers and it created a new symbiote, like a, a hybrid between Scream and this new the anti thing, this anti Scream, I guess. And so what they do is because Andy's been stabbed through the chest and she's losing control and the hell mark is going out of control, they bond her with this new hybrid symbiote, which turns her into a new symbiote now called silence so she's the absence of scream which is silence um so she's she's inverted like anti-venom um so i kind of like that i like the name silence she looks cool she's got a red streak and red parts on her but mostly white so we got you know now that flash is agent anti-venom again we have an anti-scream andy to hang out with them so i kind of like that maybe there'll be a duo again and i'm i'm curious to see like i, I won't read the monthly venom books moving forward but I don't know if these two characters pop up in their new symbiotes, Anti-Venom and, uh, and Silence, like, I might check it out because so far I'm digging it. Uh, I'm definitely digging them. So, uh, so again, yeah, so while that's happening, Lasher's running around, killing people, um, and then you have this uh, appearance of Toxin. So the little kid, remember we found out in that, um, uh, what was it, uh, Planet of the Symbiotes tie-in to King in Black? There was a little kid who was the new Toxin, and his dad is a guardsman at Alchemex. So when he sees that Alchemex building is getting attacked, he doesn't know his dad's a guardsman, one of the guardsmen that's hunting down symbiotes like him because he's a new toxin. Uh, so we don't have that, uh, but we have, uh, he knows his dad does work at Alchemex. So he's worried about his dad. So he turns into, you know, toxin to go after his dad. Um, so that's cool. So we're obviously going to get that set up. And I think that's going to be a toxin issues coming out part of this series as well. So, um, so that'll, that'll be fun. I can't wait to see what they do with that kid. Um, 
And then meanwhile, we have Phage getting into battle. He gets into a big battle with Silence and a Agent Anti-Venom. And, uh, and then it concludes. They beat the crap out of Phage. She says some weird thing. I don't like this dialogue where she says, you ever wonder where people get that mark on their upper lip, which is a cleft lip? Um, she's like, well, that's me pressing my finger on them and telling them to, to be quiet or to hush now or whatever. And I'm like, it, it was like their, cool attempt, their attempt at like a cool line for her. I thought it was silly, <laughs> and it's yeah. So uh, so yeah, I was like, whatever, okay, sure. So that made me cringe a little bit that line of dialogue, but the rest of it was neat. Phage gets beaten, thrown out the window, and then ends up leaving the human host and going back uh, to a dog and bonding with the dog. And then while you know, so he could rejoin Carnage because he's a little outnumbered now. He's got two anti-venom symbiotes like attacking him and anti-scream, so he, he he's outnumbered. So he needs to go back to to Carnage. And that's also when Lasher shows up in DC, where there's some of uh, the Friends of Humanity guards that work for Carnage. They're all sitting there, you know, you can kind of recognize them. The artists try to repeat them later, um, their designs, so that way you could visually know it's the same guys. But Lasher shows up and expunges William, the human host, and drops him dead, which then leaves his body dead for sure, 100% dead, which it already was, they said. But his mind is now trapped in the void with Carnage. And then Carnage is like, yeah, brains are weird, isn't it? Like, we can, our brains can still go on a little bit longer after we're dead. He goes, so you've brought Lasher to me now, and I appreciate that, so I'll give you what you want. And he's like, oh, my memories? He goes, no. And then Carnage, you know, uh, uh, kills his brain, essentially, and, uh, and William dies. So pretty heart-wrenching stuff. I think I saw Clay Chapman say that his father or, or father-in-law or someone in his family it went through dementia and passed away so you know my condolences obviously um and that's tragic and i think he was just like dealing with that and wanted to include that in some way in one of these stories um interesting way in including it <laughs> like i think he could have saved this for a different story to be honest with you uh that's a little bit more heartfelt um but uh but it just shows like the brutality of carnage for sure because he didn't care about this old man um you know, and William, you know, it, it, it was a tragic story to, for sure, but I think it could have fit maybe better somewhere else. But it does, like I said, still show the brutality of Carnage. So overall, I like this issue. And like I said, some of it did, you know, hit for home for me. I don't have a visual memory. So when I close my eyes, it is black. It is pitch black in my head. I don't dream or have things like that. Um, you know, so it's, it, it, it's very, it, it's very accurate, <laughs> I would say. Um, but uh, it, also, I know how hard that is to confront something that someone you love went through and putting it in the story. So, you know, I, again, I, com I commend um, Chapman for doing this. I still feel like this could fit in something else later on. It could have been more heartfelt, but um, but he still put it in here. And, and it, you know, any awareness is good awareness, I think. I think people don't think about stuff like dementia or aneurysms and stuff. And any chance I get to squeeze something about aneurysms into a story or a comic, I... I try. I don't want to force it, force it, but if I feel like it could make sense of the story, I try to include it because it's about raising awareness and that kind of thing, you know, so I'm getting people talking about it. So I'm glad it's, I guess at the end of the day, I'm still glad it's in here. Um, but it, uh, it did make me sympathize for William and, and feel for him big time. Um, but then at the end, you have Andy now as silence and, and you know, uh, Flash is like, are you okay, Andy? Are you all right? And she doesn't say anything. And then we get a setup for Carnage with his goons behind him, obviously one of them now bonded to Lasher. So I'm really curious to see, because we still haven't seen Flash Thompson's friend again yet. He went to work for Crane, and I don't know how long that job process takes to get hired, but hopefully we see him at some point. Hopefully he gets a symbiote. I think that would be cool to see him get, um, to see maybe Agony go to a guy and Riot go to a female host uh, to try to switch things up a little bit, um, or just have him be the new Riot. I mean, that could be cool too, and make Riot a good guy or something. Um, I don't know. It would be interesting to see. Or make Riot a bad guy. I don't know. We don't know much about this guy. He just said he was a soldier. So um, so I'm curious to see where this book goes and where the story goes. I am liking it overall. Um, I, I Each issue is pulling me in a little bit more and more. I, I lost it a little bit in the second issue, which Clay also wrote. But then I, it bounced back in the third part. And then now with this one, I'm, I'm locked in. So I'm, I'm very excited to see the next issue and read it. Um, I think the next one is, is it Riot or Agony? I can't remember. One of them is next. Maybe Toxin's next. I can't remember. One of those three is next. But we have those three issues coming up. And then we have the Omega, the final part of it. So obviously, as they come out, I'll try to, you know, review or discuss them as quickly as I can and get those videos up to you all uh, as quickly as possible. So let me know your thoughts of Lash number one down below. Uh, is there anything in the book that you like, didn't like, whatever it is, let me know. And we'll continue our conversation as always down below. 
Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, I'm going to take a little bit of a break from Venom stuff for a couple days. And I'll let a few things get out there. Hopefully we'll get some movie news. Hopefully we'll get some other stuff. But I'll, I'll try to wait a couple days or a week and before I get more content to you guys for Venom. But this will be the third and final Venom episode for this week. And then we'll try to jump into the Peter Parker stuff next week. Uh, you know, the last week of August. So thank you so much. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you all in the future. Peace.